Hi everyone, it's Jill Foster here with a new PB&J card class and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you some of the tips and techniques or ways that I like to mass produce or make lots and lots and lots of cards but make them all a little bit unique so I don't feel bored with the process but I also feel like I am using my supplies, using my stash and just having fun in the entire process and also kind of minimizing the number of decisions that I need to make as I am creating. So there was just a peek at three of the many cards we'll be creating today. And the first tip that I have for you when mass producing unique cards is to limit your supplies by choosing just like one to three featured stamps or dies. So maybe this is something new that you've gotten. Maybe it's something you've had in your stash for a while. Maybe it's a favorite that you want to return to. So today I'm using these stamps and dies from Penny Black's newest collection, Sending Smiles. This is our posted and posted cutout. And then I'm also going to use uh, a bloom and a bloom cutout and the other set of florals that is called blossoming and they have the exact match dies blossoming cutout so I'm just starting right there and that is what I'm going to have on my desk and start playing around with just that limited grouping of supplies so to start out I'm stamping onto Canson 140 pound watercolor paper in my misty stamp positioning tool I'm stamping this postage stamp outline using archival ink in the color of a shadow gray and then those flowers from those those two sets are sized to perfectly fit inside of this postage stamp stamp so it's like you get to create your own postage stamps and I'm stamping those with desert or excuse me toffee crunch memento ink I'm also going to stamp a little bit of the postage stamp sort of accessory stamps and those come in that postage with that postage stamp stamp and then I'm going to run those all through my die cutting machine so my second tip is to work in batches whenever possible. So I stamped all of the postage stamp outlines, then I stamped all of the flowers and all of the other little stamps that I wanted on there. Then I die cut everything. So here is what I have now. I also went over with a fine tip journaling pen from Faber-Castell. It's a pit artist pen. Any of the areas I wanted to stay black and I did that all at one time and this is what I have so far in the creative process what I love about this is now I can at any time when I have time go for these grab one of these and just paint them I like to use that um, toffee crunch ink for a sort of faux no line watercolor look I am painting with distress ink reinkers used as watercolors and it's just showing you everything that I'm using I will list all of my supplies down in the YouTube description box below I'll list and link all of the penny black supplies and then also list all the other supplies that I'm using and if you want more information about my watercoloring techniques I will also list another video I've done down below where I really talk you through the basics and answer some of the frequently asked questions I get with watercoloring I'm starting off painting the background here so I am pulling in the weathered wood distress ink reinker and I'm just very lightly painting that and I'm also grabbing a little bit of broken china and I'm just painting that first that way I don't um, get right up next to something I've already painted on the flower and have that bleed or blend out into the background I also like this that if I goof up on the background I haven't already taken all the time to paint the flower so if I think of it I always try to paint the backgrounds first I just love this idea of sort of designing your own postage stamp I think it's also so perfect for a handmade card as the focal point element on the card and I think this mix of colors really gives us sort of a vintage look without it feeling too heavy. Now I'm going to take that Toffee Crunch ink and just to again give this sort of a vintage look I pressed it onto an acrylic block and I'm just picking that up with uh, my paintbrush and a little bit of water and adding it a little bit onto that background and I love how that looks. I think it really ties everything together and keeps that background from looking like too cool colored it kind of warms it up a little bit 
So again, keeping with that tip to work in batches, I went ahead and did all of the background painting in one sitting. So now these, this is where I'm at in the creative process. And again, that also limits the number of decisions that I have to make, which I find to really help me to create more and get started. Here I'm taking that Toffee Crunch Memento ink and an ink blending tool with a foam pad, and I'm just very lightly adding that around the outside. It's hard to see until you put it up against white, and then you can see how that just gives that some definition. Now I'm ready to begin painting the flower. I'm picking up mostly ink on my paintbrush and putting that down where I want it to be the darkest. Off camera, I rinse off my paintbrush in my water cup, dab it off onto a paper towel, and then I go back to where that ink is and sort of blend it out. That makes it be the darkest where I first put the ink down and the lightest as I blend it out. Now these flowers would be beautiful colored any way that you like to color. If you love Copics, if you love colored pencils. And well on this flower and some of the others I'm going to do a little bit more shading and blending. If you stay tuned, I know this is kind of a long video, but if you stay tuned near the end I'm also going to show some very simple coloring that you can do with these and it's just as pretty. So if you're just beginning these are still beautiful and fun stamps to work with. The illustration is so beautiful that no matter how you color it, it's going to look nice. Now along with some of that picked raspberry Distress Ink Reinker used as a watercolor, I'm also pulling in just a little bit of dried marigold Distress Ink Reinker used as a watercolor and I'm just dropping that in while it's wet and letting it kind of blend out and have these areas of warm, almost kind of an orangish yellow mixed with the pink. And dried marigold is a color that I haven't reached for frequently in the past but after doing it on some of these cards in this batch of cards I think I'll definitely be using it a lot more. So I continued to follow that same process on all of the petals then I'll move down here to the leaves putting down the color the darkest um, first where I want it to be the darkest rinsing off my brush patting it mostly dry and then going back and blending it out into that open area. And again, for more detail on how I like to paint or some of my favorite tips, I'll, that video is linked down below where I go much slower and explain things a little bit more in detail. Now that is dry and I'm going to come back over and add some stamping here onto the background. I'm just using a couple of sticky notes to mask off the edge of that stamp and then I'm pulling out this post stamp. Now this is part of that 3 by 4 inch set that includes the postage stamp stamp. And so I love that you get these other bits because they add so much when you stamp them in the background. I'm doing it very lightly. I'm using a sky gray archival ink to do that. And you'll see I stamped it two or three times. That is because that ink is very light and I wanted to see how light that I wanted it to be. I ended up building it up quite a bit so it got darker. I think I may have even added the watering can archival ink once I did it a couple of times. So if you start light, you can always add darker colors on top if you don't, if it's too light for you. I removed those masks. Now my next tip is to use sketches that give your featured stamp or die a home on your cards. So I have all of these postage stamp stamps, these focal points colored and painted and die cut and ready to go. So I'm going to use some sketches to make some cards. This gives me um, an easy way to put the cards together. I don't have to think, I don't have to make a lot of decisions, but I can take the fun of designing those postage stamp stamps and have some ways to make different cards. So this first sketch is very simple. I used our rows of stitches die cut from my stash. It's a penny black die to just go right down the center of the card and I can pop up that panel on top. Here's another card following that exact same sketch. Just switched up the sentiment on that one. So here's a look at the finished card. 
You'll also notice on the sentiments for some of these, I'm using our new set 30-972 Family and Friends. It's really fun because you have all these different names, sister, mother, friend, daughter, son, and then you can, or mom, like on this one, mix and match that with the other subtitles from your mom, happy birthday, so blessed your my, and then you can create personalized cards with those and they fit beautifully on these postage stamp stamp designs. So here's another sketch idea for finishing off these cards. So I've got had fun making all those little panels and now I can easily start assembling them into cards. I'm going to stamp that sentiment and you'll get a look here of how fun it is to mix and match with that sentiment set. I love the font on these two. I'm using watering can archival ink to stamp that. It's a very like dark charcoal gray and I like it because it's not quite as stark as a black but it's still nice and dark and then here I am using the shadow gray and I'm just doing it a few times to darken it up so you can also mix and match your colors I could have done that hello in a yellow to match the flower so that's another option that you could have with that now another tip if you're mass producing but you want to do unique cards is just to limit your medium. So here I'm going to create an element for the card itself and instead of reaching into my stash for something different, a different medium, I'm just going to use those paints that are already out on my desk. I also know then that the colors that I have here are going to match up with the colors in the flowers. So I have a piece of white watercolor paper and I am just going to paint that to match the flower as opposed say for grabbing to grabbing cardstock having to dig through and find the perfect matching cardstock or using distress inks to ink up the paper you certainly can do that but if you're feeling stuck or you just want something easier maybe just try using the mediums that you've gotten out to do this set of cards here you can see I'm stamping that post onto this background and I do really love the look of that once it's painted too. I feel like it just ties in to the entire card itself. And then I will assemble this card. So I'm going to adhere that down onto my panel. I'm taking some twine and I'm just going to tape one edge in the back here. And now this panel, once it's complete, then I can add it to a standard size card and then it will hide all this in the back here. I'll take my postage stamp panel and add that to the card using the sketch for an idea for placement. And I will tie a bow. I find it's easier to just tie the bow separately and then adhere it onto onto the card and that's it and here is a second card using that same sketch here's another look at those cards these two might actually be my favorites I love that block of color along the bottom to tie into the flower and the stamping on that. And I just love all of the flowers that are part of the set. They're really fun to paint and they're just unique. They have sort of a playfulness to them while still being really, really pretty. And for this kind of card, then you could stamp your sentiment on the inside and make it to suit whatever occasion or person you're sending it to. Now here is another sketch idea with using a couple of those postage stamp stamps cascading along the background. So here I have one that didn't have any flowers on. So at the very beginning when I did that in batches, I also cut out just a few that I would have ready at any time. It was easy to do it at the beginning when I was doing a bunch of them. I'm using the mediums that I've already used to paint my flowers. And I'm just painting this whole thing. I don't want it to look absolutely perfect, so I'm okay with some brush strokes showing. I'm mixing a couple of colors on here. And then I also have a little leaf die cut that I pulled from my stash just for a little extra element. I've got it stuck here on a sticky note just to hold it still while I paint it. 
I'm going to add a little bit of that Toffee Crunch Memento ink onto this postage stamp stamp. And I'm even going to add a little bit of stamping on here. And then for the sentiment on this card, you get a nice space to really add a larger sentiment. So I'm using this one, 30-971 Paper Hugs. It's a really great match with all of these um, postage stamp stamps or for any occasion really. I'm holding those elements in place while I stamp the sentiment. I love this one, sending you a paper hug until I can give you a real one. But that just helps me with placement for my sentiment. I've adhered everything down and then I'm just going to trim off the excess. Now all of the cards that I'm creating today are standard A2, four and a quarter by five and a half inch size cards and this one as well. So then this panel can be added to the card base once it is complete. And here are a couple of cards that I've made using that same sketch. And I'll give you another look at those here. Now one thing I really love about following this process and especially picking out just one or two, maybe even three stamps at the very beginning to feature is it challenges my creativity to see how many different ways I can use these stamps, use these elements. And I also feel like I really try them, use them in lots of different ways. You get your money's worth out of your purchase and you start kind of stretching them in lots of different ways. You also become very familiar with that product and you're, for me I find I'm more likely to reach back to my stash and pull it back out when I've made several cards with it because it just kind of stands out in my memory or I have lots of ways in mind to, how to use it so the next time I use it I have less decisions to make. So here's another sketch idea. I'm going to use one of our sentiment edgers. These are so fun to work with. I'm using the friend edger. So it die cuts this word friend. Then it also has an edge that will cut, see here, the top part um, for that edge and it will nestle up right in there. You can die cut the edge part at any height that you want for your card. So you got lots of versatility with that. So I've prepped that and now I'm going to add just a little bit of that Toffee Crunch Memento ink using an ink blending tool and a foam pad on the background. I like this because it just delineates and you can see that edge a little bit more from that fun die cut instead of just being white on white. I'm going to add a little tone on tone stamping here again featuring that same stamp from that um, posted set I'm using the same Toffee Crunch ink to get a tone on tone look. And I will stamp a secondary sentiment here under friend. You could use this for any occasion. You could It could be an encouragement card, a thinking of you card, a birthday card, any kind of card that you would be giving to your friend. I'm going to pop this up along the bottom of my card panel. I love how that post stamp is just kind of peeking out there in the background. Here I'm going to do a little stamping on top of my already painted floral postage stamp using post-it notes to mask things off. I've added foam adhesive to the back here. And then I'm just going to quickly ink up this leaf die. I pulled this from my stash. It's a penny black die. And again, all of the products I'm using will be listed down in the YouTube description box below. And I'm just going to add it to fill in that space over there on the right hand side. So here is the card we just finished. And then another using that same sketch. And I'll give you a couple close-up pictures of those as well. If you like to create this way too, when you're done you have this super great 
batch of cards that you've made and they all kind of go together and that whole batch of cards can make a really nice gift to someone that they could use those cards to send out and you can tie them up with a pretty ribbon or put them in a tin and um, it's just a really fun gift to give somebody as well. So another tip that I have for you if you're mass producing unique cards is once you've kind of made your big batch that you planned on, you can challenge yourself to use the featured stamp or die in a totally different way. So I am challenging myself now to use these totally differently. I stamped them using VersaFine Onyx Black Ink and you can see now I am painting these super quickly not doing a lot of shading. My tip for this to give it a really playful loose happy look is leave some white. So you can see at the top of those petals I have just left white up there and actually I've sped this up but I am working quickly and that will actually help it have that very loose artsy look. And you can see I'm still working in batches. I have a bunch of these stamped. You can see I'm just putting down some color. While it's still wet, I can drop in another color to just let it mix together. And you could stamp and paint these in this style on the postage stamp stamp too if you don't want to do lots of blending or if you just prefer this very loose sort of artsy style. While that um, first green is still wet I just drop in another shade of green and let them just mix and blend together right there while they're wet. So here are all of the ones that I've colored you can see just very simple coloring. And then what I love about these florals, so this is those just those two stamps, is they also have the exact match dies, which opens up a whole new world of possibilities. So I went through and I just die cut all of these using the exact match dies. And I love how they look just sitting on the table there, like this just happy bundle of flowers. And then I went to my stash and I just pulled out some of Penny Black's large sentiment dies and I just began playing around with them. So I did add one on top of the postcard. So if you want some extra dimension, you can pop it right up on there. And then here I just started playing around with those large word dies, like this word enjoy. I popped a flower in there in place of the O. And then I just followed that same layout to do another card. So I didn't have to make another decision. I could just follow that same design. Here I'm using the large word U and putting a flower there in the O and I use that rows of stitches die cut again. Same design here. So I did two cards with the same design, less decisions. Here is with the immense hug die. Popped a flower in and embellished with some butterflies. And another one. Very similar design adding that um, border die cut along the top. And then again, I thought I'm going to challenge myself again to see if I can use the featured stamper die in another way. So this time I wanted to make some very clean and simple cards, which is usually the kind of cards I'm making at the very end of this process. But again, it's so fun to challenge yourself to do that. So here I'm stamping them onto a panel and painting them in, leaving lots and lots of white space on the card. I actually really love these cards. They might have ended up being some of my favorites and then just adding a strip of color down the side that ties into the flowers or the leaves. I also did some cards where I just stamped them sort of around the perimeter of the card, painted them in and added a sentiment towards the center. This is another favorite. I mix and matched a couple of different flowers. But again, I'm just using those three sets that I picked out at the beginning and then turning to my stash to go along with that as I work through the process. And here are a couple more. 
I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also connect with Penny Black on Facebook, you, or Pinterest, Twitter, as well as Instagram, our website, and our blog, and everything's linked for you down in the YouTube description box below. And I'd love to know what were your favorite cards today. Leave us a comment below. We thank you so much for watching. Happy stamping.